Whoa! Hi. I'm Dr. Paul Moon. I'm Dr. B.G. Johnson. Paul and I practice interventional cardiology at a large community hospital in the beautiful foothills of the southern Appalachians. While we are not a university hospital, we do run advertisements strongly suggesting we are. BG and I are called on oftentimes to assist in a condition known as an ST elevation myocardial infarction. Yeah, we call them STEMIs for short. STEMIs are when blood clots develop in the artery of the heart leading to complications. Our job is to deploy a device known as a drug eluding stent in these arteries. They do require patients to take potent blood thinners to prevent the buildup of clots in these stents. Unfortunately, instant thrombosis does remain a prevalent problem in this field. Indeed. So in conjunction with Amish owned and operated pharmaceutical giant Stupig, we have developed what we think is a new and better blood thinner, Exsanguine 8. An issue with blood thinners today is that they target only one part of the clotting system. Exsanguinate is different. It completely and irreversibly inhibits all platelet function. It also inhibits 82% of the extrinsic cascade and an astounding 97% of the intrinsic cascade. Yeah, Exsanguinate will open a can of whoop-ass on your clotting system. Plus, with a 32-day half-life, I don't have to worry if a patient misses a dose. Hell, Paul, you don't have to worry about a 30-day missed prescription. In clinical trials compared to current agents, we did not demonstrate statistically significant benefits over those agents. However, in subset analyses of albinos of Asian ancestry and achondroplastic dwarfs, we had our toes right up against the p-value of 0.5. We are confident ongoing trials will demonstrate clear superiority with exsanguinate. Colleagues have asked if such a potent blood thinner will cause increased bleeding. In fact, trials did show a tenfold increase in major bleeding, but compared to the risk of stent thrombosis, we think that that is a reasonable trade-off. And we have a saying around the old cath lab, all bleeding stops. Thanks to some creative work by our coding and compliance department. Yeah, we call them the yellow sheet girls. Deaths due to major bleeding were not seen in the major clinical trials for exsanguinate. Major causes of mortality in our trials included mild protein malnutrition, stage one pressure ulceration, and chronic continuous alcohol use. That last one was a big one, BG. I didn't realize so many people were taking a glass of wine with dinner every night. Yeah, them folk don't know they're playing with fire. Well, that's enough of our talking. Let's hear from some patient testimonials. I put a stand in the Mr. Hogg's breath yesterday and started him on exsanguinate. Let's go check on him. Hmm. Mr. Hogg's breath, are you in here, buddy? I'm in here, Dr. Johnson. I'm having black, foul-smelling diarrhea, and I feel faint. I'm sorry I can't come out. Well, how's that stand? Great, thanks to you and Exsanguinate. Well, listen, I'm gonna have the nurse bring around some KO pectate, and we're gonna send you on home. Well, if that diarrhea don't slack up, just come back to the ER. We'll get one of our hospitalists to readmit you. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, hold on. They just activated the cath lab. There's a STEMI on the way. Yeehaw! I needed six units of pac med blood cells with my last menstrual cycle, but my stents are doing great. Thank you, Dr. Moon. After 12 units of, of blood for my hemorrhoidal bleed, uh, unfortunately one unit uh, required hepatitis C. However, my stent remained uh, open. Thanks, Dr. Johnson. My late husband was on exsanguinate for a cardiac stent. His autopsy noted a large retroperitoneal hemorrhage and a hemoglobin of two. Amazingly, despite having no effective arterial flow, his stent was patent. I can't tell you the comfort I've derived from knowing this. Thanks, Dr. Moon. <laughs>